Hey besties. Okay, so we are in the car on the way to school. Yep. And it's St. Patrick's Day and I wasn't wearing anything green. So I found a sticker and I put it on my wrist so I can hide it with my hoodie. So if someone tries to pinch me, I'll just show them and pinch them back. How many times <laughs> is it like 27 times? I don't know. No, something it's like, like that. 10. It's like 2070. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just wearing a green hoodie, so that doesn't really work. I could have done it with my nails, but it's okay. Oh, yeah. Well, it's my green hoodie, so just kidding. But <laughs> That's my blue hoodie. Yeah, hopefully I get to pinch some people today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lexi, happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> okay, I love you, bye. Right, I already went in, and I'll just tell you, I pulled forward. Right as Lexi took a sip of a drink, and let's go. You can't even tell anymore. Well, I hope so. You look great. Happy St. Patrick's Day, love you. Bye, I love you. Bye. Introducing Leprechaun London! Woohoo! Okay, London, tell us about your St. Patrick's Day outfit today. Okay, I have green gloves, green scrunchie, green earrings, green necklace. Green necklace, yes. Green clip. Oh, yeah. I have a green sweater in the dryer, and I'm gonna try to find green socks. And she will have green sleeves, not the song, but real green sleeves when she puts her sweater on, right? Yes. So that will be perfect. Eat lots of green foods. You're also filled with green. Eat your greens. Today's the best day to eat your greens. Super cute. Just imagine it this way. I walk into the classroom. I step down on one knee. Behold, the socks. <laughs> okay, I think you are totally winning the St. Patrick's Day contest. So what is a contest, but there should be because you should win. I should like dye my hair green. Actually, no, that's going too far. I don't know. Yeah, like I don't know why I don't have green. Face and and face. Ready? <laughs> oh, London. This is one of the many reasons we love you. Nobody got her and nothing happened. Ashton's crash and the me really yeah. the only thing yeah, that see? happened was her light got messed up. Yeah. Guys, yeah. everyone's really riled up. Lexi, tell us what happened. I got pulled over in the golf cart. What? Were these guys with you? Yeah. So the thing is, Lexi had approval. Okay, she wasn't being a rebel because we let them drive the golf cart sometimes to just close by places, rad swim, fizz, whatever. And we told Lexi she could drive to her friend's house. So Taylor and I just went to go get some close to Vita and we come home and there's a cop in front of our house and Lexi's standing there and poor Lexi just looked so sad and my mom was standing out there and the cop looked definitely upset. Were you scared? Were you like so nervous? Yeah, but it wasn't that bad. So the cop was, pulled them yeah. over and then followed them all the way home. So poor Lexi has this golf cart full of friends and the cop followed them your home and that I know that scary feeling. Yeah. But what were you guys thinking? Honestly, you just I felt bad for Lexi. Yeah, I felt bad for Lexi. <laughs> So okay, who has golf carts? Ashton, you have one? Yeah. Julia, have you guys been pulled over before? Yeah. What happened, man? So, every time my parents have always let me go out. Same as Lexi, I've been driving. Did they home and talk to your parents? They've followed me home once yeah, or twice. They did yeah. that to you, okay? But they, most time they just ask for all my information, my parents' information, and then call my parents. Oh, okay. The first time I got pulled over was this summer. We were driving through Creekside and the cop cars just pulled up and started their lights. They pulled us over and I just started falling. Oh my, my first gosh. time. And I was so stressed out and I thought my parents were gonna be mad at me. But then it was like Ashlyn's dad came and he's like a lawyer, so he was like calling me down and it was fine. And my parents came and they weren't mad. The cops just got mad at us. And it's just scary because like it's a cop and you think it's gonna be okay, but then in the moment it's just really scary. I don't know why cops yeah. are just scary. But he just called my parents and had my parents come like drive it home. So, so what we were saying is actually Utah has passed a law, we found out, that golf carts can be legal on the street if the city allows it. So all we need is to get this city approved to have these guys drive golf carts. What do you think? I don't think that's, that's a good idea. My parents would so sign that. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you one of the biggest pros in my mind, is, this is what I started to explain to the officer, but I realized it probably wasn't helping. At least I wanted to explain to him, is that it's made Taylor such a good driver because she drove the golf cart years before she got her driver's license. For about two years. Probably two years. Then she was such a good driver when she got her license. I was shocked when she hopped in the car and it was like no big deal. She knew exactly what to do. It drives 12 miles an hour. It's really, it's the best way, I think, to go in between not driving at all to driving on the main roads in a car. I yeah. think there needs to be an in-between and I think the golf cart is perfect for it. it. I think there's a really good argument for it because it's much less dangerous if they've had some experience like this. And don't we all want less danger on the roads? Yes. I'm all about less danger. Yes. More golf carts, less danger. Yes. 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 Woo. I 
love officers, I do. I have had many, many good experiences where officers have helped and I think that they do a great job serving our country so I'm not saying anything negative about cops. I don't blame the cop, he was just doing his job. I just wish that this city allowed the golf carts, so. It's time to make a change. Time <laughs> to make a change. <laughs> And how do you do a counterclaim? Yes. So it basically goes in the order. So it's like consider the other side of the story, explain the other side of the story, and then like rebuttal, which is like stating why yours is better, and then it's like claiming it again. It's like yeah. why your side makes more logical. So yeah. I love that. That's and apparently it works for yeah. like a ton Nobody of things. Really any cool. reason for them not to be legal. <laughs> and legalize golf carts. Yeah. Legalize golf carts. Legalize golf carts. You guys should write a rap song about it. So Kyle and I just got here. We're at a church where Kyle's gonna be speaking about the plane crash mm -hmm. and I might share a few things too. I actually love hearing Kyle tell the story. So I'm gonna film some bits and pieces. I get really nervous. It's hard to like dive in. When you see the room, trauma. you'll realize actually, oh, cause the trauma. So the thing is, it's really hard for Kyle to share cause there's a lot of like PTSD. It's not super hard. Is. I've worked through most yeah. all that, but still it's But it's hard, and, but every time you share difficult stories, it's good for you and it helps. So if you have something that's hard for you others. to tell, yeah. it helps others, yeah. Make sure to share your hard times with people because it's good for you, it's good for them, and you'll be better because of it, so. And special surprise, we've got some friends here. Yes, we do. You might recognize. Yes, some very good friends. Wait for it. Wow, there it is. See these people. Oh, oh my gals. Oh, ta-da. Hey, hey. 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 Hi, guys. How are you? Good to see ya. How's it going? It's happening. Good. My name's Kyle, and thanks so much for having me out, guys. I have a really cool story that I want to share with you. Before we get into it, maybe I will just do a quick introduction of myself. I, I was going to tell you my age, but I think I might be just... I'm, I'm 41 years old. <laughs> I live with my wife, Michelle. She's right there. Hi, guys. <laughs> my daughters are ages 10, 12, 14, and 16. I think, is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> so Michelle and I have been married for almost 19 years. For work, Michelle and I work together. We own a swimwear company. It's called Rad Swim. I don't know if you've heard of it, but if anyone needs a shameless plug if anyone likes swimsuits, we have men's, women's, and specialize in teens and tweens and pre-teens. So I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm a big fan of the company. So anyway, thanks again so much for coming. I think that step one for you guys is to put yourself in the right place. And that starts with just like going to your youth activities. I think it's so important that you guys have done that tonight. The thing that I want to talk about tonight is kind of like a heavy topic. It is how to use personal revelation to survive any trial, specifically using faith, hope, and charity. How many of you guys, don't raise your hands, but how many of you are going through a trial right this very moment? And you don't need to raise your hands, but I have a feeling that a lot of hands would go up and a lot of hands would like shoot up really fast. I feel like we're all kind of going through something right now, whether it's big or small, heavy or light. We all have these things in life that we're working through. Sometimes these trials, they're massive, and they feel like they're just way too massive to overcome. And that's specifically what I want to talk about today. Not like, oh, I didn't get asked to prom, or when am I going to get my driver's license, or I have way too much homework. I want to talk about these huge trials that feel like a car crash to you. And specifically, I'm going to talk about a plane crash time that I was in a plane crash and I survived. But it was just the most amazing miracle. I love Heavenly Father for that because I can start in the very beginning by bearing my testimony to you guys. Because better now than when you're all asleep at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I know that Jesus Christ is your savior. He's my savior. I know he lives. I know that this gospel has been restored for us in these latter days so that we have a map to return to him. I know that we have a living prophet, and that's so important to know also. And by having all these things, we have the Spirit with us, and we're able to have the Spirit with us all the time to direct us and lead us down the right way and help us avoid these plane crashes. And that's my simple testimony. Actually, this whole thing is just gonna be kind of a, a big, long testimony, so. Just be prepared. They told me it was casual dress, so I couldn't go all the way casual, but I did wear my Jordans for you guys. <laughs> I hope that makes me look cool. <laughs> it was July 2003. 
I had been married to Michelle for about six months at the time, and her dad called me up and he said, hey, we're gonna go on this fishing trip to Alaska. Do you wanna come? And I was like, yes. He had his own airplane. He was like the coolest guy ever. So six of us loaded on his airplane, and we flew up to Alaska. And our destination was a place called Gustavus, Alaska. So we took off, and we were flying, and there were storms, and we all kind of got nauseous, and we started to get sick, and I was lucky. I felt really lucky that I didn't throw up, but people were like throwing up, and they were like tying the knot in the bag and like throwing it out the window. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so in order to escape the storm and the turbulence, we decided to fly like above the clouds. So we're flying above the clouds for a couple hours, and I was just sitting there thinking, number one, do not throw up. Number two, it is so beautiful up here. Like I was looking out the window of my plane, just you know, on top of the clouds, knowing that there's a storm below you, but it's sunny skies up here, and I thought it was so beautiful. So I fell asleep. I woke up again about like half an hour later, and we were just descending, and it was still beautiful. Like the sun was glistening off the top of the clouds. It was a really, really peaceful moment, so I, I fell asleep again. I don't know how long I was asleep, but when I woke up the next time, it was a completely different situation than when I had woken up before. One of the first things that I heard was Sorty, who was in the co-pilot seat, he said, we're all the way on empty. The needle isn't on the red line yet, but it's getting pretty close. Right from that very moment, I knew that, that something was off. And so I kind of like, you know, unreclined my seat and I sat up and I started to get involved in this conversation and I guess we were really close to running out of gas and I came to find out that we were actually still about 30 almost 40 minutes away from our destination and I had a lot of trust in Michelle's dad you know he'd flown tens of thousands of hours I wasn't really worried which was cool I thought that was really cool and one thing I'm going to touch on is the gift of the Holy Ghost or the Spirit when the Spirit is with us it's able to warn us of danger it also has a special way of helping us to react to those warnings. And one cool thing that I noticed specifically on this trip that's helped me throughout the rest of my life is it warned me of danger. But one cool thing is it, it helped me to process that danger by keeping me peaceful. And that's one cool thing about the Holy Spirit. It can help us still have peace even when there's danger. That's really what was happening. So we continued to descend. The pilot, he radioed to air traffic control and he said, are there any other airports closer to us that we could redirect to? He said, hold on, let me check. And at this time we're in the clouds. We're descending through the rain. It's kind of chaos.